Welcome back. The play-in tournament is here. Today, we're going to talk about the Atlanta Hawks traveling to Miami to take on the Heat. I got my favorite picks and a long shot coming your guys' way. This is the first game of the slate. If you're looking for my favorite picks in the Timberwolves versus Lakers game, don't worry. I got a separate one for that one, including a same game parlay and a player prop that I really do like. It'll be linked at the end of this video and posted right after this one. But either way, let's dive into how Sunday went, the final day of the NBA regular season as we had Monday off. And it was a massive day, a five in one day. We will certainly take it. Savia Mikhailuk, he got his job done. We appreciate it. We added three plays shake milton peyton pritchard manual quickly all cashed easily we did have quiet leonard i know it was a sketchy one he did under 25 and a half ended on 25 hate celebrating winners like that and then jalen green did not get it done but either way a massive day got us over the 70 unit mark on the nba season we love to see that now i do want to recap how last year we did in the postseason because i would argue betting nba playoffs probably the hardest time to bet it but last year i'll put up my record 44 and 30 plus 9.06 units look i'll take it if there's something i learned from the postseason prior to that where we lost a good amount of money was because i was forcing a lot of picks i was doing three four picks into one game look in my opinion it is very hard to bet the nba playoffs and if you bet three or four plays in one game because you're like oh, i only have two games on the slate gotta force more picks I just don't think that's the way to do it. So I know I preach bankroll management. I know that's no fun to hear on a, on a Tuesday morning, evening, afternoon, whenever you're watching, but it is important. Dial back the plays, maybe try to stick to one play, which is probably what I will do in every single game. Maybe I'll have two if there's like a bankroll builder that I like, but be sure to dial down those units, manage that bankroll. You don't want to lose the shirt off your back in the playoffs. I promise you that. Enjoy the games and just have a little bit of money on them to sweat. But either way, let's dive into this game. Both games, both teams, the Hawks and Heat should more or less be 100% healthy. They got a couple of heat uh, injury questions marks with Max Struess and Kyle Lowry, but I expect both to play. The Hawks are five point underdogs on the road. Let's dive into my player prop though for this one. It's going to be Trey Young. I like his under 37 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Minus 113 on Caesars. Now, if this line does go down, you can lean towards his 36 and a half PRAs, play it there. And if it honestly was a a combo if you maybe don't want to take pras i like the points and assists probably under and then i would lean towards the under in points if i had to pick a specific individual like for trey young now we know from first hand experience trey is capable of putting up some stinkers we've been on the bad end of a couple of those stinkers when we need him to score 20 points he's like yeah hey, i got you eight what's that get me yeah, we know he's capable of doing that. And it is also, it is always scary betting an under on a superstar because we know Trey Young's going to play the play a lot of this game unless it's, you know, a 50 point blowout. And he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. But just because you have the ball in your hands a lot and play a lot of minutes doesn't mean that you're going to hit your over 100% of the time. I promise you that. Don't just go ahead starting to bet Jamie, Jason Tatum, Jamie Butler, all these guys over betting stars overs in the playoffs. Not necessarily the way that you make a lot of money, in my opinion. Honestly, I think there's a lot of value taking these unders. And in two games versus Miami, both in March, Trey, 22 and 33 PRAs going under both of those games. Now, this is a team in the Miami Heat. We know a very good defensive team. They're going to make someone else knock down shots to beat them. Yeah, obviously, the Heat are a good defensive team. They're going to say, you know what? John Collins, go out there and knock down threes. We'll live with this. We'll live with other guys making shots, not letting Trey facilitate, pick apart this defense because we know Trey Young is very talented. I expect a lot of double teams or just a very tough defensive game plan to go up against Trey Young. He's the number one guy on their clipboard that they're like, yo, we got to stop this guy. And we've seen the Heat. They allow the fewest points per game on the pick and roll this season. Season. The Hawks are a team that runs the pick and roll at the top in the top three in the NBA. So they're running a lot of pick and roll with Trey, Dejounte Murray, Bam Adebayo. Well, Bam Adebayo is the guy guarding, but Clint Capella, John Collins, and we look at a guy like Bam Adebayo, very good at moving his feet, contesting those floaters that Trey Young's known to be doing, but also not a guy that really loves the foul. So should be able to get, keep Trey off the foul of the free throw line. And we've seen the. The Heat allowed the fourth fewest PRAs per game to point guards this year. We saw the Heat play Trey Young last year in the playoffs. This was more of a seven game series in three road games in Miami. Trey had 25, 38, and 18 PRAs. Sure, he went over on the hook in one of those games. He also relied on six rebounds in all three of those games. Very unlikely that he has six rebounds again today and does that consistently. He played 41 minutes in two of those three games. So he was playing a lot of minutes. He still was going under. And I think the Heat will likely find a way to try to stop Trey Young as much as they can on defense. Look, DeJounte Murray was brought from San Antonio to Atlanta to play in these types of games and give Trey Young a little bit of time off, not make Trey Young have to score or facilitate on 100% of the Hawks' points. I think they make someone else play, beat them. I think Trey Young's under is the way to go. Sure, he go out there and drop 35 points on her head. That's That could happen. It's a star. You're taking it under. But I think the Heat are going to do a good have a good defensive game plan for him. Give me Trey Young's under 37 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Like I said, individual line points, not a bad way to go. If the line moves a little quickly, move the points and assists probably take that avoid the rebounds i think that's a way to go now let's move on 
Let's talk about a long shot, and then I'll give you my lean as to who I think wins and covers this game. And I'll give you a long shot. We're just putting one unit on Trey Young's or, uh, under, if that wasn't pretty clear. Now, for here's my long shot play, and I'm not going to track this towards my record, but it's Bogdan Bogdanovich to score 20 plus points. Now, yes, this comes out of left field, currently plus one thousand, plus one thousand on Fanduel. Now. I'm not going to track this towards my record because I'm going to like to do a lot of long shots in the uh, NBA playoffs, but some people put $1 on them. Some people put crazy amount. I'm just going to put these out there. And if we hit one, cool. We're not going to recap it. It's not going to count win or loss towards my record. But if we want something else to sweat, I think Bogdanovich has a chance here. Now, Bogdan, obviously, his regular line is like 11 and a half. So just asking him to score 20 plus points. Yeah, you're asking for a lot here. That's why it's plus 1,000. But we know Bogdanovich, he's going to come off the bench, play a good amount of minutes. The Hawks do trust him. He's capable of shooting lights out. He could go out there and shoot seven for seven from the three-point line. That's not crazy to expect from a guy like Bogdanovich. I think he gets the open looks with Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, and these guys driving to the hoop, the heat converging, and Bogdan's probably a guy that's out there to shoot the lights off. He's had 29 points last year in the playoffs versus Miami. Also coming off a game where he just dropped 26 recently against the Bulls. Granted, Trey Young did not play in that game, but we know he's going to play his minutes. Probably gets, you know, 15, well, not 15, probably like closer to 20 to 30 minutes off the bench, and if he's playing well, we'll see even more minutes, but they know they need shooters to at least space the floor give Trey Young and Murray some room to kind of kind of work the offense because Capella on the, on the offensive side really doesn't stretch the floor at all so you need some other guys in there need some shooters and I think Bogdanovich is a decent one so 20 plus points sure it's, it's just a grab your dart throw a dart throw sure that's what it is but if you wanted just a regular play to tell me it's Trey Young's under but I really do think Bogdanovich maybe for a dart throw plus 1000 sure I'll take a stab at it put whatever you want on it you don't even have to put any money on it just cheer for the community and maybe it hits but my only play towards tracking purposes towards my record will be the Trey Young play now if you want my idea of who I think wins this game that yeah, this is a close one i think the hawks could win i'm not saying the heat are an absolute shoe in we've seen the heat show up on some games and they're like all right this is actually a pretty good team we've also seen the heat show up and say this team stinks what is what even am i watching so i think the hawks have a chance to cover i haven't looked at the public percentages but i probably fade wherever the public is if i'm being honest i think the hawks have a chance here but i probably lean towards the heat to win outright but i wouldn't be surprised if this is a close game down the wire where the hawks are close it's probably a lower scoring game if i had to guess the hawks are going to try to speed it up but that's not how the heat win i think the heat try to slow this game down so i think if it's a higher scoring game probably bodes well for the hawks if they're finding ways to score baskets if it's a lower scoring game probably goes towards the heat because i think they have a little bit of a better defensive game plan and it's kind of game that they got that out there i think low i mean that makes sense the heat have a low if it's lower scoring heat probably got a better chance higher scoring hawks probably got a better chance i lean towards heat winning hawks covering though would be what i would bet if i had to bet a spread pick but those are my favorite plays in this game obviously like i talked about at the top of the show if you want to go and find out my favorite place for the Timberwolves and the Lakers game, you can definitely check that out. We will all, we'll be doing a parlay giveaway in that video. So if you want to go check that out, I have a same game parlay. I have a player prop pick. I'll also talk about who I think wins and covers in that game. The link will be right above my face somewhere around the, on the screen. Go check it out. Timberwolves, Lakers, the late game on the slate. You can find my favorite player prop, same game parlay. And I also, have, I don't think I have a dart throw in that video, but it's going to be a good one. Go check it out. Appreciate you guys for a great NBA regular season. We finished over the seven unit mark. Let's hopefully dominate this post season make a couple more units back try to finish above 80 units this postseason love you guys thanks for all the love and support if you want to check out our mlb videos that's up there too let's have a great day see you guys in the next one peace out